Okay, we're in part two now of um, Malachi chapter two. This is part two. Um, and I'm going to just start breaking down some of the uh, scriptures and verses and commenting on them. That's what the word I should probably should have used was comment. I'll comment on them and, uh, and um, you know, may the Lord put his spirit through me as I speak so that you could understand what's going on too and you could be in agreement with it, whoever you are listening. Verse 1 says, Now Kohanim. Kohanim is the Hebrew a Hebrew word for um, priest, leaders of the church, or leaders of the synagogue, the priest. And he says, Now Kohanim, this command is for you, a command. If you won't listen, if you won't pay attention to honoring my name, says God Almighty, then I will send a, the curse on you. I will turn your blessings into curses. Yes, I will curse them. God is saying he will curse the Almighty Father says he will curse them because you pay no attention. I would reject your seed. I will throw your dung in your faces. That's doo doo, you know, crap in your faces. The crap from your festival offerings, and you will be carted off with it. Then you will know that I sent you this command to affirm my covenant with Levi, says God Almighty. Now, that first part there is very obvious that God is upset with the leaders of, of the people. The appointed leaders or the, the sacrifice. Listen up, Mr. Pope man or anybody else or myself, anybody. Those who desired or... or were called to be leaders of the people. He is saying to, to leaders first, you know, if you won't pay attention, you know, then I will send a curse on you. You know, I will turn your blessings into curses. Yes, I will curse them. God is saying this. Now, of course, this is Old Testament, and a lot of people are trying to tell us that, that, um, because Jesus rose and, and, and died and rose again for sin, that, you know, that uh, that's Old Testament and God doesn't do those things anymore. Well, um, if you read the last part, of, uh, or if you saw the last part of Malachi chapter 1, where I referred back to Matthew chapter 7, when Jesus himself was speaking, and he was saying, don't think, you know, in a sense, don't think that I've come to, to um, give you a way into heaven while you're still going out disobeying God's God's commandments, the Almighty Father's commandments, because He's God in the flesh. So He was telling him, "Don't don't think that, you know, you know." Um, and and we should not be preaching that either, because the same God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, you know. So Jesus Christ Himself. You know, like I said in in uh, during Malachi chapter one, Jesus Christ Himself, and we will see that in in the near future. He has not said anything different than God. God is upset with the leaders because the leaders, number one, so far they're not preaching the truth. They're preaching the sugar coated, half hearted gospel. They're allowing people, as we saw in chapter one, to come bring. Any old kind of sacrifice without absolutely not, without showing any respect to who God Almighty is, the Father is. You know, so then he goes on to say in verse five here, my covenant with him was one of peace, life and peace. And I gave him thing these things. It was also one of fear. And he feared me. He was in awe of my name. Now, I think I, I said in uh, Malachi chapter 1, I mentioned how people think God don't, Jesus don't want people to fear him, or God doesn't really want people to fear him, and people will say, well, um, God is not a God of fear. He says when he gave the covenant to Levi, and I'm reading right here in Malachi chapter 2. He said it was a covenant was also one of fear and he feared me. And I mentioned before the fear is not 
fear of being being killed necessarily in a sense, but the fear of which God can do if He wants to, but it it's a fear like you have of your parents. You know, you know that you're going to seek punishment from your parents when you were a child. And a lot of times that fear kept you out of getting yourself into trouble and it kept you out of getting yourself hurt because even though the temptation was there to go do something, because you were afraid of what your parents might say to you or do to you, if the moment they found out that that you had done something that they told you strictly not to do, it's that kind of fear that and respect for a loving God, who God is, that he wants us to have. So that when people say, don't fear the Lord, that's not true. You know, we don't, we're supposed to have enough fear of him to stay out of sin and keep from participating in sin. And yes, if, if need be, because who's going to stop God from doing that if he wants to? If need be, for an individual who just downright don't want, you know, that the punishment that comes from God just might be death, you know, and destruction. But as we can see even in the Old Testament, God always uses um, final death and destruction, desolation as a last resort. He gives plenty of warning. He gives plenty of leeway for people to get hurt. You know, not seriously hurt, but hurt because of their own actions. But you're still alive. And the reason why God lets that happen is because, okay, you've gotten hurt. Because you went out there and you committed some kind of sin. And you reap something back from it. And that reaping is supposed to uh, inspire you to not want to go commit that sin again. However, we know in this world, there's, there's some people who, even if they are reaping from their, the sins they commit, they still want to keep doing the things that got them in trouble in the first place. And, you know, and they want to get worse with it and start going on and doing more and more and more. There's people like that in this world. So God is saying here, you know, that uh, the covenant that he had with Levi, the Levites, the Levites, you know, back in the days of Moses, they feared him and they obeyed, basically. That's why he says he was in awe of my name, just my name alone, you know. And then uh, the true Torah, Torah is... Um, the word of God was in his mouth or the law that Moses, the things that Moses wrote and told the Israelites to do. So he says the true Torah was in his mouth and no dishonesty. This is the key thing right here found on his lips because he feared and awed God. He didn't dare try to use the word of God for dishonest reasons or um, dishonesty or deceive somebody, you know. So um, God is saying here, Levi, he walked with me in peace and uprightness. 